welcome. Hi, it's Carrie. Um, I just turned my air conditioner off, so we're going to have to speak quickly before I melt. You read the title, you know that this is going to be a reading vlog about a thriller that is tied to COVID. And um, wow, that's a first for me. I have not read, I know that there's like fan fiction or like kissing the coronavirus. I've avoided such things, um, but I'm here now and we're gonna see how that goes. But I need to tell you how I even found this book. Um, and that is through our sponsor, Book of the Month, who if you watch YouTube and you don't know what Book of the Month is, Okay. Book of the Month is a subscription service where they have a team of book reviewers that comb through thousands of books and they pick their top five for each month. And you are able to access those books for a very low price. They are all hardcover. They are either new or even early releases. And your first book, if you use the code SUNNY5, which will be down in the description box, your first book is $9.99 for a hardcover that's relatively unheard of. They are still only available in the US, so there is no international shipping, and you can end your subscription whenever you want to, and there's no penalty, whatever. You can start again whenever you want to. I'm gonna show you the July books. So we have We Are the Brennans. It seems like a feel-good yet heart-wrenching story um, about a family that's kind of split apart, drawn together by suspicious circumstances. It's all about little Irish Catholic family in New York, so um, we stand. Razorblade Tears is about two fathers who have to come together and search for the murderer of their sons. Their sons were a married couple that were murdered and um, they want justice served. And so they are going to serve the justice themselves. And um, it just seems really heart-wrenching talking about the acceptance of their gay sons, which I don't think they did accept them um, when they were alive. And even the jacket cover had me kind of crying. So um, emotionally heavy read putting that on the shelf for later. This is a book I've heard a lot about, The People We Keep. Um, and it's about a girl who just kind of leaves her bad home situation. She borrows her neighbor's car and just goes. And um, she starts to understand the concept of a found family. And she drives all over um, the country and kind of just keeps a record of the people that she comes into contact with and how her life changes and how her world expands. And yeah, I've heard buzz. This one is definitely like right after I finish reading the book we're gonna read together in this reading vlog, I'm going to read this. Sisters in Arms, <clears throat> I have to read this. It's based on a true story of the 6,888th Central Postal Directory Battalion, which is the only all black female US battalion to be deployed overseas during World War II. I have never even heard of this. I'm really excited for this book. I'm glad that they sent this to me. But the book that I chose, aha, that we're gonna read together is, oh, they say I've got great taste. Thanks guys. Um, we're gonna read 56 Days. 56 Days Ago. Claire, oh, sorry, Sierra? Sierra. I don't know why I said Claire. <laughs> 56 days ago. Sierra and Oliver meet in a supermarket queue in Dublin and start dating the same week as COVID-19 reaches Irish shores. 35 days ago. When lockdown threatens to keep them apart, Oliver suggests they move in together. Sierra sees a unique opportunity for a relationship to flourish without the scrutiny of family and friends. Oliver sees a chance to hide who and what he really is. Today, detectives arrive at Oliver's apartment to discover a decomposing body inside. Can they determine what really happened? Or has lockdown created an opportunity for someone to commit the perfect crime? So, <laughs> I'm taking a risk on this one. I'm taking a risk because, um, oh God, the back says, no one even knew they were together. Now one of them is dead. Um, so, so we're gonna read this. I don't know how you guys, let me know how you guys feel about Corona literature. I'm worried. I'm worried. Um, so we're gonna read this together. I'm very excited. I actually think this is gonna be my air. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, Jesus. These books literally just rearrange themselves. 
on the desk. I don't know how that happened. Aha, that we're gonna read together. But this is gonna be my airplane book. And um, for book of the month, I forgot to mention, if you want more than one book, you can add on. You can add on up to two books. So we're gonna start it. I just can't tell you how excited I am to be holding a hardcover. Like, oh my gosh. Shall we get reading? We shall. <laughs> Welcome to my disaster zone of a tea <laughs> area. I chose this one just because I could finish one box of tea and make room for another one, so. and we have a corona moment um it's talking about how there are these like cops that show up at this place the woman from number four stands with the garda i think it's called while remaining the regulation six feet away how weird that at first i didn't even think that was weird <laughs> okay we're we're continuing <laughs> Sorry, I'm already back. This is so interesting, actually. So I wasn't sure if Corona stuff would be kind of corny, but this is actually a very interesting observation that the author made. So she's talking about the people who live in this apartment complex and talking about how like you never really know your neighbors when you live in an apartment building. So the crisis induced camaraderie they've been watching in unsteady, narrowly framed short videos online someone calling bingo numbers through a megaphone at a block of apartments, a film projected onto the side of the house so a cul-de-sac of homes can have a collective movie night from their driveways, nightly rituals of hopeful, enthusiastic hand clapping that never really took hold here. They have kept their distance in more ways than one. And this one, this is what's really interesting. No one wants to have to deal with a familiarity hangover when normal life returns which they are still under the impression will happen soon. That's, I never even thought about a familiarity hangover. Like what happens if you were always really distant from people and then because of Rona, you kind of create a bond and then once life quote unquote goes back to normal, like, will that be awkward? Hopefully, I don't think so. Like I would love for people to continue being familiar with each other but what an interesting phrase anyway so so far it's not corny i thought that the the rona stuff was going to be a little corny but it's actually just strangely accurate so catch you later um i put on an eye mask thing so ignore me but wait a damn minute i was thinking so i'm on page 54 i was thinking like mm, mm, you know this is kind of boring it's like a couple meets and they kind of start awkwardly dating but um something changed to the point where i had to go back and read the jacket and confirm some things and um oh suddenly everything just changed and i'm actually really interested in this story what the heck so currently we have three different points of views we have um, Sierra's point of view, we have Oliver's point of view, which just started, and we have Lee, who is a detective policewoman, um, who is investigating. She's, like, present day, and then we're doing flashbacks to Sierra and Oliver. Okay, okay, I'll see you guys later. Howdy. I'm back. So um, I am on page 78, which is frustrating because it's not the end of a chapter. Okay, I have enough time. I have to go to dinner. Um, I have a dinner, like a going away party kind of thing to go to. Um, so I'm gonna finish this chapter. I'm on page, let's say 80. And you know what? This is interesting. It's not the best written thriller. Like it's not, it's it's pretty much just telling you everything that's happening. It's not necessarily very lovely descriptive prose. It's just kind of getting the facts out there. Um, but 
it's a little twistier than I thought it was going to be. Like, I actually don't know some things that I thought that I knew. So clever, Catherine. The author is Catherine Ryan Howard. So anyway, I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. But, um, you know, so far so good. And she is kind of, I think she's like realistically showing how the virus happened. And we're about to reach the point where like lockdown occurs. Um, so I don't know. It doesn't feel hokey. It doesn't feel super cheesy, but we'll see. So catch you later, tomorrow. Yes, bye. <laughs>
all the stuff I was seeing was like anti-China or anti-Asian. So when people would comment and be like, you gotta be careful, you gotta stop leaving the house. I was kind of like, shut up. It's just the flu. I think people are just being hysterical and wanting to be racist and like wanting to make this a huge deal in order to blame it on Asia. That's really how I felt for like a month, I think. Um, and then it became serious. Um, so I totally understand how like in the over the course of one week, she's like, at first she was looking at this guy with a mask being like, calm down. And the next she's having a panic attack in a grocery store and like, I think a lot of us went through that. So in a way, what I'm trying to say is that I think this was tasteful. It was definitely like two privileged people who are like, their bosses were totally like, yeah, work from home. It's no problem. You know, we'll like, we'll do this two weeks unpaid, but like they didn't care because they clearly had the money and like blah, blah, blah. So it was definitely like a privileged to people in quarantine that a murder occurs. <laughs> um, but it wasn't, it wasn't poorly done. I don't think it, it was like, um, I don't want to say mediocre thriller. It was an all right thriller. I was mainly reading it to see what the Rona situation would be like. And it was fine. It was realistic. I would say if you are looking for like a quick thriller, it was a little slow. And then I think when I hit page 50, I was suddenly like, okay, wait, I need to know what happens. Yeah, I would say, I mean, don't not pick this up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm glad that I read another thriller. They just don't read this when you have a mask on. Like I think sitting on the bus with my mask on, reading about masks, I was kind of like, not my best choice. <laughs> um, but anyway, I will leave you guys here. Corona literature, let me know what you think about it. Have you seen anything else other than like kind of funny ones? Like kissing the coronavirus obviously is not to be taken seriously, I don't think. It just felt contemporary um, in this strange world that we're living in. So um, do you guys know of anything else like this? Any other examples where um, a book takes place in the time of Corona. Um, I wonder. So let me know. Let me know your thoughts about um, is it too soon? I mean, I've seen people reading Severance, especially like my friends who live in New York City and who are reading Severance. I'm like, why would you do that to yourself? So what do you feel about people who are watching Contagion and like all this stuff? How, what are your thoughts about it? How do you process media right now? Those are my thoughts on 56 Days. Um, not bad. Not bad at all. So once again, <laughs> thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this. Um, and again, there is a code SUNNY5 if you use it. Um, your first book will be $9.99. Again, they're all hardcover. They are picked with love and care. I will catch you guys next time. I'm so hungry. I've been sitting next to this sandwich for like 20 minutes and I haven't eaten it yet. And I'm, I just need to like finish filming things I'm so hungry. So um, yeah, I will catch you guys later. Did I have, oh wait, I think I had something that I wanted to read out loud. Oh, oh, okay. So this was interesting. So she was talking about like kind of walking around in this like new lockdown situation and like people were wearing masks and blah, blah, blah. And she's talking about like, there were some people who were in masks and some people who were like drinking coffee sitting next to each other, right? Um, and so she was saying, it was as if some people thought the end was nigh, while others hadn't even seen the papers. The strange phenomenon of all of this, she discovered since, was that you yourself were capable of being both types of people. Yeah, I just thought that was an interesting, an interesting quote. So anyway, I'm not mad that I read it. It kept me very occupied on my trip to the dentist. That was nice. I got stuck in bus traffic. It was excellent. So yeah, I will catch you guys next time. Um, my background will be different by the time that I see you next. I will be in America for a little bit. So that will be fun. And um, yeah, I will see you guys then. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you, Book of the Month, for sponsoring this. Bye. <laughs>